Once you have identified plants surviving glyphosate in a field, the next most important thing to understand is the response of individual plants within that field. So go to an area of the field where you have some surviving plants and look closely down at the soil and you should be able to see dead plants as indicated by this plant right here. Hopefully you're catching this early enough that most of the plants in the field are actually dead. This is very important to understand and look for because if you have dead plants and other species are dead also, you know that the glyphosate did work. Near the dead plants, you should be able to locate plants that appear normal in growth, but are stunted compared to an untreated plant. These normal appearing plants are injured because glyphosate almost always produces some level of activity in plants, even though they are resistant. In addition to observing dead and normal appearing plants, a continuum of responses from nearly dead, as indicated by this plant, with just a single area of growth, to decreasing levels of activity should be visible. This response is very similar when identifying resistance to growth regulator and PPO inhibiting herbicides. The greater the injury, the more likely the level of resistance is low. Understanding and observing this continuum of responses is critical to determining if glyphosate resistance is present in a field. One other response that's possible is a plant such as this one, where the glyphosate has killed the main meristem of the plant, and all the nodes below that, the axillary nodes, begin to recover and grow and produce branches that appear normal. This is likely to be a lower level of resistance because of that main meristem being killed compared to a plant such as this one in which the main meristem has continued to grow normally. Here is a normal looking common ragweed leaf. Notice how wide the area is between the leaf margins on the lobes. But when we go to a plant that is injured from glyphosate, and trying to survive, notice how that distance between the leaf margin on the lobe is quite narrow. And then you might have colors of yellow and white intermingled with this. And that is showing that the glyphosate is still present in the plant and having activity. We have discussed what to look for across the field and individual plant responses. It is important to understand that glyphosate resistance is different compared to previous types of herbicide resistance. When you observe dead plants next to plants that appear normal but are stunted and observe a continuum of injured responses between dead and near normal, glyphosate resistance is likely present in the population. This is especially true if observed in just a single species in a field.